what are some of the tips and suggestions that you would give to a resident that is considering opportunities and those learning curves, if you will? Sure. Um, so, okay, so for, for, for my aspect on the federally qualified health center aspect, um, I didn't actually realize um, that working for an FQHC had some uh, financial benefits as well. Um, you don't necessarily have to be Mother Teresa and you know and say that oh, just because I'm working at FQHC that you know you're, you're living like a resident the rest of your life. Um, there's actually some, some significant loan loan forgiveness programs by working in, in an underserved area. Um, and so again, uh, I thought that it was just like the 10-year public student loan forgiveness and that was it. But uh, especially here in California, there's at least three or four different programs of which I, I was able to qualify for one. So um, again, if there's a, a panel, I mean, if there are anybody who's watching has questions, I have no problem, you know, um, delving into that deeper. But uh, but just I guess that's one ancillary benefit because in addition to the intrinsic benefit of you know being able to care for my patients who I feel like need it the most, um, and I'm also able to provide for my family. To Dr. Pacheco's point, uh, I do believe in work-life balance, and I want to spend as much time with my little kids as much as possible. So, um, thankfully, I'm working a 4:10 schedule, so three-day weekends ain't bad. <laughs> um, so, those are, I guess, one thing that I would have advice that I would have for for residents would be to um, look for opportunities that fit, like Dr. Pacheco saying, your lifestyle. What do you what what life do you see for you, and then pursue those opportunities because they're definitely out there. And if they're not out there, then maybe you can create it. Absolutely, I couldn't agree with you more. Dr. Pacheco, how about you? Uh, would you be able to share some tips and suggestions that you would give to a, a resident that is considering opportunities? Yeah, um, I think everything um, that has been said, I think the other thing to think about is really um, doing just a tiny bit of homework on the organization that you're interested in. And um, I, I know Dr. Iqbal works for Kaiser Permanente and I work for Geisinger and Dr. Runis is at F FQHC. So these are three very different models of de care delivery within primary care. So, you know, um, really quickly, you know, you've heard a lot about the underserved. I have a, um, you know, all payers are in on, on my particular healthcare organization. So while we are in the insurance business and have our own health plan, um, we also take all payers uh, for the most part. And so what impact does that have to you and the organization that you're working for? And then, of course, as, as the provider in that organization, what does that mean for you? And, and this is a lot of information that I certainly didn't know. Um, I don't think any of us knew when we picked where we were going to work or where we landed, but um, really, really important uh, in, the, in the long term. Um, and I'm sure Dr. Iqbal will talk about what, what life is like at Kaiser Permanente. I'm, I'm hearing she doesn't do billing and coding. So I'm looking, thinking maybe I need to change jobs because her organizations No, but, uh, I, 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 again, I think investigating the organization that you want to work for, what you, how you want to practice in the long term. you know, when you come out of residency, you're like, I just want to be a doctor and I just want maybe my paycheck to look a little different than it does in residency. And I get that. I think we all went through that. I think um, you do have to think, what's it going to be like in 20 years? Because you're going to do this for a long time. And so we talk about work-life balance and we're all at various stages of our career. Um, and I'd like to talk about the organization that you pick because I want to retire from Geisinger. I don't want to look for another job or go back into the market. I want to feel career satisfaction, uh, professional growth, and then of course, ultimately being uh, feeling like I've done the right thing by my patients and my community. Thank you for that. And you know, I just want to emphasize more on, or and add, or do a follow-up question with you on uh, your response just now. So considering that there are uh, there, uh, residents are getting uh, several different offers and trying to make their final decision, what led you to accept your residency within Excella and move forward uh, with your, your final decision, Dr. Pacheco. So I chose Excella and I, and I apologize if I haven't c correctly answered the question. I chose the program, the residency program I chose, and I'll take a step back and say that, um, I had an offer to a program that was very highly academic in Atlanta. And, um, I picked the program in Latrobe because it was unopposed. There were no other residents there. I got very dedicated teaching from, all walks of life from specialty to primary care 
to really even administration in the hospital. And um, it was a smaller group of people. So I was really fortunate to get every and any experience that I wanted. So I picked an unopposed residency. When I was in general surgery, it was a multi-residency program. So there were family medicine residents, gen surge, internal medicine, you know, GI, you know, you name it was there. But when you're in an unopposed program, there's no one but you. So when it's a GI bleed, it's you, or, you know, when it's anything, it's you as the resident and everybody is clamoring to give you the experience. They, they most, for the most part, um, attendings love to teach. I love to teach too. There's nothing like a learner. Um, so that's what went into my decision-making about residency choice. Thank you.